Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Koviak. Uh, today we're going to take a minute, we're going to talk about making your own stuff out of leather. And I'm going to show you some of the things you need, how easy it is, some of the extra bonus tools you can get, some of that kind of stuff. We're going to break it down for you. Before I do, I want to mention too, this shirt, public landowner shirt. This is uh, from Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. If you do not remember Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, you definitely should be. I got this shirt when I was at the Kalamazoo Traditional Bow Hunting Expo. And like I said, if there's one organization you should be supporting, it's that one. If you're not supporting them already, you should take your right hand, smack yourself in the face twice, and then take your left hand, use it, pull your phone out, get online and register immediately. It's that important. Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. They're, they're, the, they're, they're the ones standing up for making sure we have places to get out and recreate and enjoy the outdoors. So definitely should no I don't they don't pay me to do that no I'm not sponsored by them no I'm not anything like that but it is worth doing so um, but when we're gonna get into this I'm gonna show you basically the simple stuff now I'm not good enough with this that I would show you the proper ways to do it but I can show you how well I can show you how to do it I can show you the tools you need some of that stuff but this is a very simple process as I'm finding out um, but I'm not good enough that I would hold a, a video that I'm going to teach you how to make specific things I'll show you some of the things I made I made like this is a stringer that I just built right here haven't tied up yet here's another stringer that I've made uh, right here that was what got me into it was wanting my own longbow stringers and I'm not making any good ones out there so I bought this stuff to start making my own also made a couple things like this right here which is a leather strop that sleeve a sleeve strop that goes right over top of my ceramic rod sharpener so that then after I sharpen it on the rod I can also strop on this leather strop that's on there like that so I've been making a lot of my own stuff I'm gonna make my own tabs this year I think as well too when I get a little uh, spare time um, I got enough arm guards to last me forever, but if I needed another arm guard, I would probably make my own. So there's a lot of benefits to knowing how to work leather. I'm going to zoom you in closer and I'm going to show you some of the stuff that you need um, to get by, some of the stuff you might want, and there'll be links down below for it. But this is a super, super simple, very rewarding, and very powerful skill set to have, being able to make your own stuff. Like I said, I spent hours, hours online looking for longbow stringers. Uh, they would do what I wanted to do and couldn't find it. Finally, I broke down and bought this stuff to build my own. And you know what? It took me like 10 minutes to make one, and I have the best stringer ever made. And nobody can even make them better than this. And now I got people calling me like crazy, wanting my stringers for their bows. Um, you know, like I said, it's just so much versatility, even this. You know, I always carry this ceramic rod with me, and I don't have a, a leather strop with me. I could take a piece of leather, but if you're going to take a piece of leather and then try and strop on it, it's going to move with your hand. It's nothing to keep it stiff. Well, by putting the ceramic rod inside of there and having it as one unit, now that's nice and stiff and works perfect for a strop. So, so many little things that you want to accomplish, you can accomplish if you know how, a few basic principles of this and what you're doing and it makes it so easy and the stuff is so dirt cheap I mean so inexpensive to get into this so let me reframe the camera bring you in closer show you what we got here so I'll be right back all right what you see here this is my kit right here okay this is my little leather making kit now cutting board recommended you don't have to have it I guess but uh, this right here has been very valuable this little pad this was like six or seven dollars double-sided but it is a self-healing pad so when you cut this reheals itself if you poke holes in it they reheal themselves pretty good as you can see um, and so this is handy but having a cutting board or something to put under that if you start pounding things is not a bad idea but this is nice to have um, th this important this is just kind of a bonus if you're gonna be doing it on your wife's kitchen counter or something like that but basically this little pad right here this little cutting pad not necessary or mandatory but it definitely does come in handy uh, for the measuring factor but also like I said when you cut on it you can cut all the way through like a cutting board and this does heal when you're pounding in or punching holes you can punch right into this and it doesn't hurt anything uh, and it's not going to bend your uh, your forks so you'll see what I'm talking about so that definitely an important thing again there will be links for all this stuff below the leather, I bought the leather right on Amazon, okay? This right here is 2.5 millimeter thick leather. I'll put a link down below for it. It comes in a 12 by 12 sheet or 10 by 12 sheet. 
This one comes in a 12 by 12 sheet. This is two millimeter leather. Both of them are fantastic. I've been using them, you know, I'm using the same stuff for both and they're working fantastic. Uh, and they're very affordably priced. So when it comes to leather, like I said, you can buy bigger bulk, but for the projects we're gonna do, free shipping on Amazon and to have it, and it's pretty affordable stuff to have. And you can see how many, I mean, you can make a lot of stuff out of a couple of these pieces here. So they're not very expensive. They're very functional. Um, I like them both equally, the two mil and the 2.5 mil there's not really a heck of a lot of difference between the two of them so either one is going to work that's what i'm using for stringers uh that's what i used for this uh this is that piece that i made that i was telling you about that i made for my strop that goes on there stringers this one's made out of 2.5 mil right here and this one is made out of the two mil right here they both work fantastic and they do exactly what you need them to do now what besides this set here what we also have is this is my little toolbox. Okay, got this toolbox. I actually had this laying around, just a cheap toolbox that I had. I think we had it for our indoor, for in like a bathroom tool kit to have for hanging pictures and things like that. And uh, we upgraded that to a bigger one, but you can get these anywhere. You can get them at any Walmart, anything. They're like $5. Or you can use a uh, plastic, uh, you know, plastic bin, anything you want to to store this stuff in or just store it in your toolbox. Doesn't matter. Paracord, that's what I'm using for stringers. So I have paracord here. Um, that's what I use for, for tying the stringers. You will need a hammer of some sort comes in real handy this is one that we had laying around no big deal um, on there but now here's where we get into the leather making tools now in the top of this right here I keep these now these I use for both kydex and for leather okay and I'll put a link to these below but these are your grommets these are your grommet pieces right here that you will use to make you can see their grommets and that's what is used to make these eyelets that we're putting in this stuff right here like that. That eyelet that's in there, that is what those grommets are. And you will need a special tool for that to do those or a hand tool. Um, but I keep those right up in the top of this is where I keep those at. Stay right up in there nice and neat. And then uh, this side's just got some extra stuff. But basically, the only real tool you need if you want to do this, you can do with is an awl. Okay, this right here, this little, you get them as a two pack for three bucks. Both of these alls were like three or four or five dollars or something. They were dirt cheap for two of them. But this right here will do basically everything you need for leather. Because what it's going to let you do is it's going to let you punch your holes through there. So you take this piece of leather and if you want to start stitching it, you can take that all and poke right through. And as you can see on there, I just push that right through there. And so I can now pull that out and then I can take and go up a little further and push that through that spot and right there like that and now I got another hole. So as you can see, you just keep going right on through there. If I want to put one in the middle of that, we'll make it a three hole over here. So I push that all through and now as you see on this, I, wherever your ca camera is here, but you can see that I could stitch that now if I wanted to, go through both sides. So really that's all you need. You know, this and some needles, but uh, but basically that is the only tool you have to have that makes it really easy to punch through leather. So I have two of those. I got the two awls on there. Again, I will have links below for you. They come in very handy. Um, in here I also have some beeswax because I'm using that. I'll show you what that's for here in a minute. Um, this is a beveler. This comes in real handy. So what a beveler does, again, a beveler is not a mandatory piece here. You don't have to have a beveler, but what it's going to do for you is you can see how these corners here, how this stuff gets pretty rough on there. That rough edge right there uh, or here like this. Well, what's nice is when you have that edge, if you want to smooth that out, you want to bevel it first so that it doesn't fold itself over. So see how that edge is and then I just take this piece right here. I'll do it on this, but I take this and all it does is peels that off. I'll do half and leave the other half here so you can see it. Watch. I'll show you here so you can see the difference. Okay, just like that. Now on there, what that beveler has done, as you can see on there, is this side you can see where I didn't bevel it here. And then on here you can see where I did bevel it. Now when I go to uh, smooth this and flatten it out, that's not going to curl over or give me a lip or anything like that. It's just nice and smooth, which I'll show you later in the process. But that beveler tool right here, not very expensive, but that is what actually lets you bevel that piece down and get rid of that edge so that when you fold it or when you start working it, it's a nice, clean, perfect edge on there, which is what you're looking for. So that beveler tool, great idea to have as well. 
uh, but not mandatory. You don't need it. I didn't use it when I made this stringer here. Um, I didn't use it on my first couple stringers when I did them. I didn't do that on there at all. But what it does let you do is it'll let you really get this stuff packed down like you're seeing on this one for your edges right in here like this. It really lets you smooth out those edges nice and neat and clean and really clean up that profile on there. So I do like having that beveler. Again, I'm still I'm not a pro at this even a little bit. Uh, thread. This stuff here I found is amazing because what I was using is fast flight serving material. Okay, this is stuff that I had. It's .026 fast flight serving material and it is what I sewed these with. This stringer right here has got that on there and then so does this piece right here has that that's what that's sewn with but now the stringers I'm doing I'm using this black thread right here this is a uh, tiger thread it's supposed to be pretty strong um, it's one mil thick or whatever they call it but it's pretty strong stuff I cannot break this no matter what I try to do so I'm very happy with it and it's waxed it's almost like our fast flight string material and it's a thick flat but it lays flat so it goes through the needle so I'm really impressed with it it's not expensive and I definitely like the outcome I'm getting with it if you look at that on here that's a nice looking piece and that stitching is like I said very strong very robust gonna hold up very well and I'm very happy with it so that stuff I've been really liking using for this now tool wise for those grommet setters this is that piece I was telling you about this is not cheap this is the only thing on here it's expensive but I already had it because I use it for kydex but you can see it's got that taper on the inside and then it's tapered on the bottom of this tool so you set your grommet on there and your leather so you take this piece here and you set it into there into that slot take this one put it down through the top like that so it pinches it together I'm trying to keep you perfectly framed here for focus because we're pretty tight there we go like that and then you're going to hit this with a hammer and it is going to set these grommets that you have on there and roll them over on the other sides so what you're going to get with that is that rolled over and flipped over for that side so it's a beautiful system um, and this one keeps it nice and aligned perfectly so when you push that in and you hit it down you are smacking that straight down exactly even now it's not dirt cheap I want to say this is probably 60 bucks for this or something like that I'll put a link down below for it but you can also get a hand setter one where it's just the bottom part where you get rid of this middle piece and you basically have a bottom here and a longer punch here you set it on here and you hit it with a hammer and it works just fine you're about 12 bucks too um, but this is a lot more precise and like I said I already have this because I use this for my Kydex stuff too I use those same grommets that you saw here I use these for Kydex making as well those right there and I'll have a link down below for them in the project you're making may not even need to have those grommets but that's the only kicker part of this that's expensive is that particular tool that grommet tool um, this right here this is a burnisher I'll show you that here in a minute too um, but then the other tools that I got on here, a couple things, a little sandpaper, goes a long way, just use it for roughing up edges. You're probably going to want a ruler of some sort, you probably already have one laying around your house. If not, I'll put a link to one um, down here. Another piece of just angle that I use for a straight edge. Now, when it comes to putting this stuff together here, these right here are really handy, and I'll show you how they work. But basically what we have here is we have these forks, okay? These are forks that you can use to poke holes in there. And there's basically, you got a six, a four, a two, and a one. Try to open them here for you. But you can see in here, and I got some needles in there as well too. But what's nice about these, and I'll put a link for them, is you can take this. So we were doing those holes in here. We were doing it, where was the piece I was doing holes in? Right here. So we were doing those holes up there with that all, by hand taking that all and pushing that all through. Well, this evenly spaces that out for you okay makes it really nice and spaced so I'm gonna kind of move this over for a second here so I can show you but so if we bring this over here I can take this piece and I can stick it here I can take that set it up and line it up like that I can hit this like that pull it out and then I can hit it again anywhere I want to go I can go if I'm running out of space and I want to go to the two prong I can grab the two prong version of it like this Take that, put that in here, and then I can finish out setting that right there. And then see what you end up with is it gives you perfectly spaced offset stitches on there. You can see them on there. See how nice that is versus the three I did at the end with just the all. 
they give you that perfectly spaced setup and the way they're angled it lets you when you do your saddle stitch to come through the bottom and then come through the top as well too so it gives you options on there how you want to go about it so it's a beautiful those little forks are also very very dirt cheap these things are, are next to nothing in expenses here um, and then you're also going to need some needles the needles you want to use I will have a link down below for them uh, but what's nice about them is when you buy them you're getting them you can get them in a kit like this so you're getting this whole tube full of needles in there, something like that, but they're leather needles. I don't remember what size this are, is, uh, but they seem to work really good for everything I'm doing, and I'll put a link down below for them so you can see exactly which model they are, so you know what you're getting into. But those needles are gonna be important because they're gonna be big enough eyelet to let you put the thread through and to do your saddle stitching on there. So that little kit of these definitely these little forks comes in very handy for letting you make those nice neat holes through there so that i highly recommend um, another thing you may probably want to get is a set of punches now you don't have to get all this these this many of these um, but these are different size punches and what they do is they let you poke holes in that leather nice neat and round so when i come into here where you are you can see them on here but these are all different size punches so if I look at the quarter inch one for this one, for example, right here, this punch will actually let me punch out a perfectly round hole in leather. So if I take that same piece and I wanted to punch a hole in there for where I wanted to put that grommet, put that on there, a couple taps, there it is. You can see it come through on this side over here, perfectly smooth right there. And when I pull that out, we got a perfect hole right there in the middle of that leather. It's just nice, neat, and clean all the way through. And then this has got that slot in there, so as they build up, as they build up in here, they are going to pop out the other side. Or you can actually take a, you know, something that's small enough to fit in there. Uh, let's see if maybe one of these will. This one might, and I can take that, I can push that piece of leather out. You can see that hole fall out of there, that little tab of leather right there was gonna fall out, but anyway, that's what that slot's for, so you can get that hunk of leather out of there. But these, again, very, very inexpensive. Now, for doing uh, punches in leather, I use a quarter inch one for the grommets that I'm using, because I'm using quarter inch grommets, but you can, you get this kit of them as well for cheap to give you bigger sizes. I mean, they're going up pretty, pretty good size from very small, minor size, like you're seeing right here. Um, give you an example on that, on some leather, a couple of these different sizes. Um, you can go with something, what's the smallest one in here? Because that's probably even one that you could stitch with. I think I got the smallest one. So you could take this one here and you could pop out that little hole right there. And then you could go all the way to the biggest one like this. And pop that out. Oh, I didn't get through that one all the way yet. There we go. One more hit to be sure. Bigger they are, a little more work you need. But see, that's where this cutting board comes in real handy. All that stuff self seals, but you can see the variety of how they cut punch nice, super clean holes. That little bitty one there, quarter inch one there, and whatever size uh, that is on there, does it even say half inch size that you're getting there? So you get this kit that's going to let you be able to punch those holes into this stuff. Uh, like I said, for dirt cheap. Again, I, I don't have the exact price off the top of my head, but like I said, we're talking, uh, you know, like 10 bucks or something like that. They're dirt cheap. So those punches come in real handy as well as a tool to have. And you're going to want some kind of a snap blade knife so you can take and cut your leather. Again, where this green pad comes in handy. But if you want to cut that, instead of having it be frayed and messy like this, it lets you take that and make that nice clean cut right across that leather. So a snap blade is kind of nice, so you get that perfect edge when you're cutting it. You can cut it to the sizes and pieces you want. Again, dirt cheap. It's a simple snap knife. It's nothing fancy or expensive. Um, and then another set of tools that I bought that I didn't buy at first that I think is handy, like here you have your round hole hole punches. These are half moon punches. Now these come in really handy for me making, now like this first one I didn't make. You can see I cut this one with a knife. And then that was kind of tricky and it's kind of a little rough in there, not that great, but look at how nice and smooth that is. It's because I was able to use a punch to punch that with and make that perfect. So these half diameter punches uh, like this, these moon punches, they go from very small in size to being like a half a hole, very little compact, all the way up into these real big ones 
as you're seeing like this. And again, they come in a kit for dirt cheap prices, but what that does is lets me fine tune. So if I wanna round that corner off on there, instead of taking this like that and trying to do that with a knife and trying to get it sort of sharp or, or shorter rounded, I can take this piece here, let's take a bigger one. I can take this right here, let's go with this one, so it really shows. But I can take this, set it on here like that, and I can round that corner right out. Let's do this corner and cut that right off so that we can see it better. So like that, and I can hit that. And now what I've done is I put a nice perfect half moon round on there. Um, and again, for like here where I need to take a chunk out of this for the stringer material, these things here work fantastic for doing that job and cutting that right, popping that right out. Nice, smooth, straight and easy. And again, dirt, dirt cheap. These do not cost much money for this stuff. They all come in a nice kit for you. Um, so they're very inexpensive. And the last thing is gonna be brandisher, which is this right here. Now I bought it two ways. I bought this one right here, which I actually like a lot. And then I bought this set for Dirt Cheap 2 that goes right on my drills. Okay, this one, there, you can see them, they're bits. These ones are made out of Coca Bolo, but I'll bring it in here where you can see where's the head of that. So you can see that right there, and then here's a smaller one. They are gonna go right into your drill, and then they're gonna spin and do the work for you. Um, and that's where the beeswax comes in as well too. So if you have a piece of leather here that you wanted, like this piece that we just cut, for example, you can see we just did that cut right on here with that knife, right there where we just cut that off at. So we would take our beveler to make that look nice, take your beveler and you just bevel that off like that. So now what I did is I got rid of that top edge on there so that it is now going to not, otherwise it's gonna mushroom. Now it will not mushroom when I do that. So I take that right there, I can put, take a little bit of water, put a little water on a sponge, and then I can just wet that a little bit, get a little bit of water on there, and I can take my brandisher, put it in there in the middle of that like that, and I can work this leather. It'd be a lot better if I had something to hold this stiffer but I can get that and it's gonna tone that down and get rid of any of those small burrs on there. And so it's gonna get that cleaned up and roughed up real nice. And it's all done by friction and heat. So if you wanna be able to get some friction worked up on that, and then once you have that smoothed out like that, then what I'm doing is I take my lighter, taking a little bit of this beeswax, I'm heating it up for a second like that, and I'm just getting it on there. I'm basically, and there might be a better way to do this, but this is how I've been doing it. Just getting some good wax on there like that. And then you can still use this by hand brandisher and do that like I was just showing you and working that in like that and heating it. Or you can take this one on your drill and it just goes a lot quicker. And it's gonna smooth that leather out. And now when you look at the difference of this, you can see what it looked like here before, right there. And now look at where that is, where I just did that. Look at how nice and smoothed out that piece is and you get rid of that roughness on there. Uh, so it just makes it nice, smooth leather. Again, cosmetic it serves really no purpose, but it does make it a lot nicer for your finished edges that you're doing on things like that to make it there. So, but again, very affordable. This tool is like $1.29 or something. This stuff is, none of this stuff is expensive. You do not have a lot of money invested in this, but it gives you a lot of freedom. And as, you, as I said in the beginning, in reality, that is the only tool you really need is that and some kind of a thread and preferably a needle, which I think I put my needles back, but those are all you really have to have. The rest of it is kind of bonus stuff and I'm just buying as I'm going along, but making your own leather products, super, super simple and having it where it's all nice and neat and fits into this, uh, you know, this nice little toolbox and everything stored there, it's just a lot of fun to work with. I mean, I get to really enjoy this and I get to be creative and make whatever it is I want, but I will have links down below for you for any of this kind of stuff. I'm gonna reframe the camera real quick. So as you can see, not a lot of stuff to have to get. Beautiful, simple, sweet, and easy. Now when it comes to doing the stitching, 
there's a couple ways to do it and, and there's a million ways to do it and there is no perfect rhyme or reason if you look at these here i'll bring them over there for you this is my first time i ever stitched anything with, with this way and all i did was take a needle and thread and i ran it through there and i ran it through one way the other way one kept going all the way to the other end and then came all the way back and then i just tied it in a big knot right here on this end as you can see sweet simple and easy that's how I did these two. We're done the same exact way. They look good on one side because, and you can see, I mean, these are sewn with six layers of de of uh, fast flight serving material. They're not going anywhere. But then I just tied it as a big knot at the end right over there. It worked fantastic. Well, then I went online and I learned about how to do a, uh, where did I throw it at? Did I knock it down? Yeah, I did. I learned how to do a saddle stitch. And these are actually saddle stitched here. So you can see, I'll just use this one here, but you can see that that is saddle stitched right there. And that stitching is perfect all the way across and then perfect on the other side as well too because actually when you finish it you tie the knot on the inside bring them together and it's a simple process saddle stitching but there is uh, I don't want to be the one to tell you how to saddle stitch again because I don't know enough about this I am the furthest thing there is from a leather expert from even being good at making things with leather all I know is that for me the saddle stitching was definitely a bonus and that's how I'll do everything now. But for me, it was a matter of them not having an item that I wanted and nobody making it good enough. People out there just don't care enough about a stringer to make a good stringer the way I want a stringer to be made. So I thought I'm going to make my own and it just led into the options to be able to do some really cool stuff for myself. Like I said, I love this little thing. I straight up love that. I carry it everywhere now in my pack, but I have my ceramic rod and then I have a strop right there that fits right over top. Took me all of three minutes to make. Um, when I'm making my stringers, it's a two by four inch piece of leather and a two and a quarter inch by four piece of leather. And I'm folding them over, sewing them and making them fit exactly for my bows. So everything is 100% custom fit better than you could ever buy anywhere else. And I straight up love the results. And as you see, and if you look at the links below, this stuff is so incredibly affordable. I mean, it is shocking how affordable. Like I said, I mean, you're talking five or eight bucks, maybe ten bucks for these, all these, ten bucks for that, five. I mean, and again, stuff that you don't actually have to have all of it. All you really need is a snap knife, some kind of thread or th thread or serving material, and an awl, and you're good to go. You don't have to get that fancy. But like I said, there's some pretty cool things here to this, and I'm having a heck of a lot of fun doing it and making it for my these things for myself, and I thought I'd show you nothing to be afraid of. Very, very simple process, nothing hard. The only thing you really got to research on it would be how to do a saddle stitch if you want to. Um, one more item I would love to have would be a clamp. They make these clamps for 25 bucks to hold your leather. So uh, if you want to stitch this, we poke those holes, this clamp would come up and hold this like this so that I can have both my hands free to work on it. I'll put a link to one down below. I don't have one yet, but it's on my to-do list. But, uh, but like I said, this is not, not complicated. Nowhere near what I thought it would be. And it got so many neat little tools to make it easier. So there you go. There's kind of an intro into building some of your own leather stuff. You know, you want to make a leather tab. You take your piece of leather, you lay it out, you draw your tab shape out on there, you take your uh, razor knife wherever I put my knife at, and you cut out that shape on there, do that. And uh, then you take a piece of cordurian or whatever you want on there, put it on there, you take your forks, right here so you got your perfect lineups you take your forks pop 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 right across there so they line up put it in your thing saddle stitch it and you now have a perfect tab that you would have paid 20 25 bucks for that you just made yourself for about three dollars you know um same with arm guards i mean think about it arm guards nothing a leather and some holes on the end i mean simple stuff but you can custom make it exactly for what you want when you have the skill set and a couple simple little tools. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it gets you started on a track of making some fun stuff and enjoying it. And uh, thanks for watching. Links down below for you. And I will talk to you soon. All right, bye.